Well, Christmas decorations, cards and other festive tat is in the shops, so it must be October. I've already sorted my Christmas presents out this year. I bought a bowling ball. When I got it home, I found it didn't have any finger holes. Wait a sec. I've been had. That's not a bowling ball. It's a piece of subsea equipment. It doesn't float. Do you know what it is? If you don't know, take a guess. I'll tell you at the end of the video, where there's also a surprise showing what it was like in England 400 years ago. Remember last month I was banged on about Neptune's yeah. P1 and Duva projects requiring the first ever mechanically lined piping pipe? Well, Neptune and Technip FMC are at it again with the world's longest heated production pipe. On the line from Fenya to Njord A, it's important to keep the temperature above 28 degrees C or waxes may come out of solution and solidify. Normally the oil is well above this temperature but if the field were to shut in for any reason the temperature would fall and so Neptune are using electrically heated pipe in pipe. 36 kilometres of it. Between the two pipes the electrical trace heating cables are wound under the insulation material. Centralizers are installed to protect the insulation um, cables and there are internal fibre optics can be used for temperature monitoring. Meanwhile down in Italy, jackets and top sides for the toll mount field have sailed away from the Marino, the Ro Rossetti Marino yard. Um, the project's on track to deliver gas in the second quarter of 2021, despite the timetable being hit when the yard went into lockdown uh, last March due to the coronavirus pandemic. The project consists of a platform and associated export lines feeding the Easington terminal. When it arrives, the jacket and top size will be lifted in place by Heronmer's uh, Sleipner heavy lift vessel. Sleipner's had quite a year. It only arrived in home port in Rotterdam in March, and since then it's carried out a number of projects. Uh, it carried out the lifting of the 8100 Yoten B jacket in a single lift, and then it went on to remove the Brent Alpha jacket. 10,100 tonnes, that's seriously huge. It's a world record for a single lift. And then it went on to the wind sector for um, HKZ. I think it's on Tyra now. One story grabbed me this month. It's the Evologics has rolled out its new Penguin AUV as part of the MUM, modifiable, modifiable Underwater Mothership R&D project. For some time, one of the Evologics co-founders, Dr. Rudolf Banash, has been studying the Adelie penguins and particularly the effectiveness of their locomotion. The wind tunnel and water tank experiments demonstrated that the spindle-shaped flow bodies modelled after the penguins achieve ultra-flow drag coefficients in water. Each penguin vessel carries a Evologix USB-L modem for underwater data transfer and position estimations. Another interesting project I've been watching, part of the Horizon 2020 programme, is called SeaClear. SeaClear. It's an acronym. You're not going to get it. Search, identification and collection of marine litter with autonomous robots. I mean, the acronym's rubbish. But maybe that's some sort of ironic linguistic device because the actual project involves removing rubbish from the seafloor. Today's ocean take contains anywhere between 26 and 66 million tonnes of waste. But so far, most of the work's focused on removing the waste from the upper surface. Today's ocean contains anywhere between 26 and 66 million tonnes of waste. But so far, most of this has been focused on removing the waste from the uh, surface, where in fact around 94% is located on the seafloor. The project involves using an aerial drone, a small ROV to locate the rubbish, and then a larger ROV to remove it. The challenge, however, is much of this has got to be done autonomously and this means using machine vision to decide what's rubbish and what isn't. The remote vehicles will be transported and controlled via an unmanned, uncrewed um, surface vessel. Now probably one of the biggest uncrewed surface vessel stories this month is the Mayflower trimaran which was launched a couple of weeks ago. It uses hybrid wind, solar 
and diesel propulsion and carries research pods for sensors and scientific instrumentation. The project is driven by marine research organisation Promari, together with IBM, and with the aim of working in tandem with scientists and other autonomous vessels to better understand critical issues such as global warming, marine plastics in the oceans, marine mammal conservation. The Mayflower will spend most of the next six months undergoing sea trials before crossing the Atlantic in the spring 2021, following a similar route to the original Mayflower of 400 years ago. Throughout the 3,220 mile journey, the unmanned vessel, uncrewed vessel, will will use artificial intelligence underpinned by advanced edge computing systems, automation software and computer vision technology to make its own decisions. It has the ability to scan the horizon and for for possible hazards and make changes on the live data. Of course, it will rely on accurate information and therefore will be fitted with a number of reliable tools and sensors. It will be the first application for Veilport's UVSVX, sound velocity, temperature and depth technology. Veilport's also contributed its VA500 altimeter. Xblue will supply its Octans AHRS our attitude and heading reference system to provide heading, roll, pitch and heave data for the navigation systems. But it isn't the only ocean-going autonomous vessel around. A month or so ago, a 12, the 12 meter USV Max Limer mapped 10,000 square kilometres of ocean floor in a 22-day project. In collaboration with a number of industry project partners such as Global Marine, Teledyne Carries, Woods Hole, Nippon Foundation, that's Gebco, it concentrated on the southwestern edge of the UK continental shelf. Speaking of autonomous vessels, Norwegian Yard GMV, the country's largest manufacturer of aluminium workboats, has started construction on ships for Ocean Infinity. Each of the vessels will carry out ROVs, AUVs and a variety of other sensors. The fabrication contract with GMV covers the first four 21 metre vessels and the design of a 36 metre vessel is underway. The vessels have highly efficient propellers, engines and batteries that reduce CO2 level emissions. Oh, Oceanfinity also announced that it'll use the Saab CI Leopard for its, in its Armada fleet. The answer to the question at the start is that these devices are sonar bells or passive sonar reflectors. They have no batteries or moving parts and work in the same principle as cat's eyes in the road. The cat's eyes reflect light from a light source, whereas sonar bells reflect sound from a sonar. The sonar signals are sent down and reflect off the front and the back of the inert spherical reflector, producing a characteristic double echo, which is very distinguishable from images that appear on the sonar screen. Sonar bells can be used in a variety of applications, such as defence sector, calibrating sonars for warships, submarines, um, even possibly mimicking submarines, or deployed mines in detection exercises. They can be used for markers in channels, for ghost fishing. The bells can be tuned to any number of different frequencies, depending on the intended use and required target strength. If you want to know more about subsea engineering, read UT2 or UT3, the magazine or online magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology. If you would hit the subscribe button, I would be more happy than words could say. Remember the story about Mayflower? Well, Professor Bob Stone and the HIT team, HIT team at the University of Birmingham, have produced a walkthrough of what it was like in Plymouth 400 years ago. If you want to know more, go to 1620mayflower.co.uk to see how it was made. Thank you.